What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. No, it's been a while since I uploaded. It's been about like two weeks, I think, but that's because I've been waiting because I did find up buying a turbo for this car. Not the turbo I named in the last video, but I bought a turbo. We're gonna go through, out, through that in this video today, but we're gonna go run some errands first. I got my dry clean I need to go run and pick up as well as drop off this run. Um, I, I know my stickers are looking a little bit dilapidated. I got a new Zero Three Four sticker actually coming in. That should be either it right now or it should be here in a little bit. Um, gonna run and take care of some errands. I'm gonna go get some lunch and some gas. So let's get that warm start because I just got back from work. It was a short day today. I love short days. And uh, we're gonna clean this thing, this, this video too, probably this afternoon. I don't know if I'm gonna include it in the video or not, uh, but I'm gonna do full carpet cleaning, do some cleaning up in here, clean the glass, all that kind of stuff. But let's get that warm start. So I'm gonna power the access port on. I'm also gonna to need to top up my windshield washer fluid. I'm getting occasional washer fluid error on this car now. Um, I've had, I've dealt with it before. I use my washers a lot, so that's probably part of it. Um, yeah, I need to clean up this, this floor. Uh, so a lot of people were asking on the headlight video, the VLAN Mark 8 style headlight video, how to get around the DRLs. So the issue is, is with these headlights, and apparently they're not supposed to do this, but the DRLs will turn off every time that you hit the blinker. So if you're doing a lane change, you need to do the, the, the slight, the half press where it blinks three times, or if you're in the turn lane making a turn and you're holding it down, it will actually turn the DRLs off and go through the full startup sequence every time, which is bad because unfortunately the Mark 8 style lights actually have a blue light on them, which some people might not care about, but for people like me who are kind of like goody two shoes and don't ever wanna be on the bad side of the law, uh, outside of working in a government position in a court system, um, you don't want that. It's a very quick way to catch an impersonating an officer charge. So what I do to get around that is I just turn my parking lights on. Um, now I have an S, so I don't have the automatic option. Um, this is this is a base model GTI, as you guys could tell with the key start. But that's actually what I do to get out of worrying about the uh, the DRLs turning on and off and all that kind of stuff. So let's close the door and hit the road. So a lot of cleaning has to be done here. It actually got rained in. Um, not kind of not intentionally. Uh, I was going through a drive-through. It was a really severe storm and the drive through didn't have an awning so water got in here I was able to dry all this up pretty easily but it did get some water spots on the windows which we'll take care of but I'm actually gonna cruise the windows down a bit because this thing's actually got really good noise suppression for um, I'm gonna roll them up a little bit to give you guys some chance of surviving with the wind buffeting and that will crack these for some depressurization I got to get a new handle as well a lot of people notice that's been bad since I got the car but Small things, small fixes, easy fixes. So we're gonna buckle up, I'm gonna put on my Android Auto and we're gonna hit the road. All right guys, so we are on the move. That sign looks like it was stolen. How about that? But we're on the move, we're headed up to go probably do dry cleaning first and then get gas and then hit up my lunch spot. After that, I'm gonna get some Taco Bell lunch and uh, probably should order, probably should have ordered that before I left, but I'll order it while I am getting gas. Uh, because I should have a pretty simple order. Probably won't be even terribly expensive. Thanks, my brother. Now uh, that was my brother driving by in his Turbo Fusion, and uh, yeah, probably won't let it scream too much in this video because I am being cautious with it while uh, we're getting the turbo ready. But we'll make a little bit of racket. The echoing off the trees is what does it for me. That's one thing I missed the absolute most about the sport track. Probably the only thing I miss about that truck now was just the echoing off the trees. The sport track was not a good sounding vehicle, but I just love the echoing. And I wish I could have, I wish I toned it down a little bit on the sound because it sounded so bad. Uh, but I, I was like loving the echo off the trees. That's something I've always loved about having loud cars. Thankfully, this car sounds pretty good too. Uh, it's a little bit raspy at times, but usually when you're above about five grand or four grand, it sounds pretty solid. So as I stated earlier, when we got in the car, I actually did not wind up buying the TTE 475. And that's because I have a friend in Texas who goes by Birionaire on TikTok. Um, he had a Mark 7R with a big turbo. His EQ, I think it was a Vortex XL turbo on his, and it was, and it was manual. 
really cool guy really cool car he's got a b9s4 now which is part of the reason why i want one so bad michael's b8.5 s5 doesn't help how bad i want one uh or it does help i guess it does bolster it and it makes me want one even more but my friend has the mark had had a mark 7r that was stick shift within vortex xl and he put me on a company called mamba tech and now there's another youtuber by the name of boosted turd who has a <laughs> i love that name has a white mark 7 manual gti with the turbo i'm end up getting and i used him kind of as just a research kind of guide there i watched a ton of his videos i watched his pocono race day where he was at roll racing a pocono in it uh and i was just kind of researching mamba tech as a whole and apparently according to my friend in texas they're actually f the former suppliers for the vortexes um eqt switch suppliers some point in the recent future uh and mamba tech used to be their supplier uh, so I wound up purchasing a Mamba Tech GTX 3071R. It's a hybrid, much like the uh, Vortex XL. It's even an IS-38 based hybrid, which was kind of important. <laughs> Gosh dang, it hooked right up. It spun a tiny, tiny bit, but man, it just ripped, okay. <laughs> oh, I hate when it gets hot out because my IAT skyrocket because I'm still in stock intercooler. But man, that was fun. Uh, but I'm pulling up to the uh, uh, clothes place now, my dry cleaners. See, so is the Mark 5 R32 out here today? There's a Mark 5 R32 that hides up here sometimes. It does not appear he's out here today. Unfortunate. Get a little bit of turbo noise to pull up to the uh, dry cleaners. Oh, y'all better how y'all were able to catch that but i'm gonna handle this and i'll be back taken care of let's head over to get gas got a watch around here i'm gonna look back way some mustangs over here there's a 5.0 and a 3.7 should get some gnarly turbo whistle off the back of these trailers jk lol up a little bit. Street bump. Okay, we're good. So part of the reason I wound up going with the Mamba was actually because of the fact that it's a nine blade design. It's got the same compressor size actually as Michael's BNRS4 on his Speed 3. So it should be plenty of juice for this car. Now you're probably, what's probably gonna upset some people is the fact that I'm actually having it turned pretty low. I don't intend to make more than 385 wheel horsepower, if even that. Oh, we got a Focus ST. It was uh, almost the car I wound up buying before I decided to go with the VW. Some nice NK wheels, squad. Actually, I've got Koenigs. Of course, the pump I want to use is down. It's a 335i over there. Okay. Let's see how bad I'm going to get absolutely slaughtered in the wallet today so yeah i got the 3071 it's a big 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 turbo for this car that's ball bearing as well so it should handle it quite well actually i'm gonna go ahead and reset my trip and uh i'm really excited because it really should put this car up like i said i'm only i'm getting it tuned pretty conservative and that's for the fact that one this car is mostly meant for cornering and two it's a daily driver it doesn't need to make a absolute f ton of power it's mostly just for functionality sake but i'm going to well i guess i can't now that the car's off but all right pump my gas get my uh, food ordered next door at the taco bell and we will go home oh 
<laughs> that sounded sick. That's a big single if I've ever heard one. Oh, he's pulling right up next to the other 335 over there. That sounded gnarly. It's all the car guys out right now. So, $45 to fill this car up from a quarter tank. That is ridiculous. Someone's got an exhaust. Oh, is that Camry? He looked over too. He was like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it my four-cylinder Camry." <laughs> no, hey, people, people are gonna start somewhere. I had a freaking Ford Explorer. I can't even talk. But I guess we'll show off for the 335s heading out of here if we can get some good room, because uh, you already know how it is. I think I already cycled it. Genesis up there. It's a nice day. I'm not even gonna complain that there are car guys out. I mean, I'm not even mad. behind us to show my, how much I love the environment. JK, I actually like the environment. I just don't understand why cars are the ones that are targeted when they're way worse out there polluting the earth than cars. Harley Davidson F-150, don't see those terribly often. It's like the four-door lightning in it. What in the world is happening over here? Shoot, please don't back into that trailer. That looks expensive. All right, and now my, for some reason, very popular work sp or lunch spot, Taco Bell, for the last of my errands to run the, this fine afternoon. And uh, I'm gonna go pick that up and I'll see you guys in a minute. So got the car in the garage and now we're gonna get to cleaning it up. I'm gonna talk very briefly because I kept getting distracted um, by, you know, just driving uh, about the turbo. So like I said before, uh, I decided instead of getting the TT475, I would go with the Mamba GTX 3071R. And the reason I went with that turbo instead of the TTE was one cost. So the Mamba was formerly EQT's supplier for the Vortex line and uh, you know, obviously they're really good turbos. Um, and you know, but a Vortex XL is about 15, 17, 15 to 1700 dollars, I think. And the Mamba was twelve hundred and fifty dollars after everything was said and done. Now, of course, it does come with a wastegate actuator, which is probably the thing I'm probably least excited for, is transferring the actuator off of the IS20 for that. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, and 
On top of that, we've got, uh, you know, ball bearing. It's got a nine blade turbine. If you're familiar with diesel engines, you guys know nine blade, tur nine blade turbos on like a Power Stroke or a Duramax or something like that. It is loud. And I mean, it is obnoxious. And I've always loved that. I've always loved how loud diesel turbos are, especially the nine blade offerings. So oh, I don't expect to have that level of turbo whistle. I expect it to be pretty loud. And I'm pretty excited about that part as well. Um, I've got an ARM intercooler gonna be coming soon as well. It's a front mount. Uh, I went with it because it seemed to be the, the, the go-to choice for a front mount. Everyone said that was probably just the best one to get. Uh, it's inexpensive. You don't have to drill the crash bar or anything like that. And I went with front mount instead of a stock location just for ease of install really. Because let's be real, putting a front mount on these is way easier than doing more stock location stuff. Stock location is an absolute dumpster fire. And I would much rather do front mount where it'll be easy. You can go in the car and be done with it. Um, I'm not doing the bike cooler upgrade. I'm not upgrading the entirety of the charge pipe system. I think that we're gonna be fine on the stock charge pipes. Um, it's one of those, if it's not broke, don't fix it kind of situations. And that's why I'm leaving the stock ones in. And then finally, I'm gonna get some Denso 5750 part number plugs. They are IK H01 something 27, I think. Uh, is like some sort of descriptor form, but they are iridium, they're non projected tip plugs, which is kind of important. They're two steps colder than stock, so it should be perfect for the bigger turbo. Uh, it's actually the spark plug, one of those spark plugs that EQT personally recommends. The car is going to be pro tuned by EQT. I just got to figure out where to go because I do not plan on street tuning this car. It's a fly over here. I do not plan on street tuning the car. I plan on going to a dyno facility. Uh, more than likely, I'm between, I need to call both of them and make sure one, at least one of them will do it. Uh, there's a shop out in Villa Rica, Georgia that does uh, Euro stuff, and there's a shop in Powder Springs, Georgia, which mostly does Hondas, um, but I'm going to be going to one of those two, and uh, hopefully hopefully at least one of them will be able to let me use their dyno for remote tuning with EQT, because um, I really would rather not street tune the car. I'd rather be able to watch the power numbers in real time and you know know from the get-go what the power numbers are of this car once that turbo is installed. Um, I'm getting the car tuned kind of low, which is probably going to be upsetting for a lot of people. I don't intend on pushing this car much past 385, 390 wheel horsepower. Uh, the reason for that is because it's my daily driver. I'm caring more about longevity than I am uh, just making a ton of power. And I know that's the, that's the lame route. Everyone wants to see a billion 400 horsepower GTIs on YouTube. And, you know, if, if that's not for you, go watch Jewel City. His car is making like almost 500 wheel. And if you really want to see that fast of a GTI on YouTube, but for me, I'm going for longevity. It's my only car, it's my daily driver. I gotta be careful with it. And I know these motors are stout and they can handle a lot, but uh, to me, the more reliable, the better. And I wanna have reliable fun. That's the key thing here. And making over 400 wheel on a front wheel drive car is just useless. I mean, it's just, you don't have much fun with it. I mean, if you had an all wheel drive car, like I've been saying this entire time, if this was a Golf R or an S3 or even an A3, Quattro, uh, I'd be turning it up. I'd be like, let's go, 450 wheel, send it, dude. But this is a front wheel drive car. There's no need for it to make that much power, uh, especially for something that you know mostly operates in second and third gear on public roads. So I tend to, I, I was just like, you know what, I'll get it tuned low. That way, if I ever do go nuts, I wanna crank it up if I ever turn this into a drag car in the future, because who knows where life will take me. Um, then I'll crank it up then. I'll push 450, 500 wheel out of this car and we'll send it to the sky. But for now, with it being my daily driver, my only car, and kind of the car that I need to depend on, we're gonna do something kind of tame and keep it reliable. And that's kind of the point there. Um, but yeah, I just gotta figure everything out on the tuning end uh, because everything else is ready to go. But the turbo's on back order, which is why I haven't uploaded this along as I intended to be my next upload to be me unboxing it. but. Uh, I just decided it was best for me just to make a new video for you guys because I don't like going super long without uploads. But anyway, I'm gonna cut this out. Hope you guys enjoy this time lapse. And uh, we're gonna get this thing cleaned up. I'm gonna install my new stickers I got. I got a couple of new ones are over there now. Uh, uh, but I got a new 334 sticker for the door and I've got a couple of Mudkip stickers. I'm a big Pokemon fan. And I already have a Mudkip on the back but it's coming off the car as well just like the 334 sticker is. Um, don't necessarily know what I'm gonna do with those. Uh, I might not put them on the car because they're pretty small. I may put them on my little detail box over here. But let's get to it. I hope you guys enjoy the time lapse. I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down all around. 
this empty town I'm searching for the lost and found But you don't care, you're unaware Keep moving like the scars aren't even there It's in the air, like a blazing flare So just got done cleaning the exterior. I say I just got done. I've been done for like 30 minutes, but this heat is kicking my butt. And so I've been down the water and sitting off to the side since I got done. I'm just kind of letting the car dry off. Um, unfortunately, the Meguiar ceramic wax I use, I use the ceramic spray wax that Meguiar sells. You can get it like AutoZone and stuff. It has a habit of streaking. And that's why I backed it in here after I finished washing it was in an attempt to Try to have the paint surface a bit cooler to the touch so that it wouldn't quite streak as bad. And while it is true, it didn't streak as bad as it normally does, I think I am going to wind up switching back to the Griots that I've been using in the past. Um, I have added to another ceramic detailer instead of the ceramic wax. Maybe I don't need to be using ceramic wax when I drive the car. Uh, when I used Griots, I didn't have any issues with that. So I know maybe McGuire's home is a little bit different, has a bit of a bigger habit of streaking. Um, the car came out really good. Uh, I went a little bit of an extra mile and, you know, cleaned up the glass a little bit more on the outside. I went back and like hit it with the towel several times, trying to kind of better this, this look. And uh, I think it came out pretty good, especially for having been a month since the last time I washed the car. I've been getting a lot of storms and stuff like that. So just kind of was taking my time. But I think my battery's about to die on this GoPro, so I'm gonna try to uh, hurry up this along. Thank you all again for watching. Hope you all have enjoyed this kind of just Kind of chill video, kind of more of a day in the lifestyle video. I apologize for my parents, I'm sure I look horrible right now, but this heat's killing me. As you can see, I'm not, um, you know, as skinny as I would like to be. And uh, so heat is a little bit of an of a, of a enemy for me. Um, but thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully the very next video will be the turbo unboxing. I apologize for keeping you guys waiting, but it's been on back order. I've been waiting patiently, so hopefully, please bear with me. That should be here soon. And the next video will definitely be an unboxing of it when it arrives. Uh, thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Go follow the Money Threads account. Uh, it's the same with my Instagram, so um, as, as is all people's threads accounts. So uh, in the outro, you'll see my Instagram, but go follow me on threads as well. And uh, stay, stay tuned because they'll actually be getting some uh, sneak peeks that would have probably gone on Twitter. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a fantastic day.